Hello everyone, and welcome back to episode 3 of a Minecraft Odyssey, and we got a dancing horse in the background. Uh, I don't know why they do that when they get on top of the fences, they just, they feel the urge, the urge to dance. And I am so shiny right now. I've been getting really lucky with the uh, the armor drops, like protection 2 stuff, protection 3 stuff. Probably one of the nicer things about playing on hard mode is I think you get a little bit luckier with that kind of stuff. Uh, but anyways, I'm holding some uh, golden leggings in my hand. I figured... Uh, why not start out the episode doing a little repair job? So uh, if you remember those fire protection leggings last time uh, that saved our life so many times, I figured we'd go ahead and repair them and give them a, an epic name, something full of, uh, of of lore and legend. So let's see if I can get this anvil right here. Nope, a little bit higher. There we go. Um, so we're going to put this in there and there. Only cost two. And the, the epic name I've decided upon is... Hades Long Johns. Yep. I would definitely wear those into battle. Actually, that's a, let's make that possessive. Hades. Hades Long Johns. There we go. So go ahead and chant those. Awesome. <laughs> um, okay, I get F5 bowed. There we go. Much better. All right. So now that we got all the, the monkeying around out of the way, um, progress. What's gone down? What's happening? Uh, what have we done in the last week or so? Uh, well, I've done a lot of stuff. I'm probably more off camera than I should have, but uh, you know, there's so much stuff that's the same um, no matter what let's play you watch early on in the game. I just don't want to. Uh, I don't want to make entire episodes around things that get done to death um, in every episode. So I've done a few things. Um, I did some enchanting. I managed to get Fortune three. It was actually really easy. Uh, because now when you put something in the enchanting table, you can uh, get a look at one of the enchants. Uh, so all I did is I just enchanted a few books and a bow um, until I saw Fortune 3 pop up. And it didn't take very long. And I went and I hopped on it. So that's pretty cool. Um, I did, we talked about last time at the end of the last episode, doing some digging out down here and stuff. I did do a little bit, but I kind of stopped. Um, I didn't do too much because I, I ran into some... Uh, uh, what's the what I'm looking for? Kind of like write, uh, writer's block, but builder's block. I was having trouble uh, deciding exactly how I wanted the layout to go and everything. But I did do a little bit. I connected a tunnel over here to where our, our mine shaft is. And I also uh, dug up a little bit. So I'll show that. Let's get over here where that ladder is. Um, and there's a little lake up here, actually, or a little pond. Um, I'll probably get rid of it. It's kind of in a bad place. Generally, when I come across like naturally generated stuff like this, I like to try and build around it and kind of incorporate it to my design. But uh, yeah, it's just in a bad place because it's kind of like 10, 10 blocks off the ground. Uh, but what I've been doing is I've been putting down a few little indicators of places above ground to kind of just have a better perspective of how big I want everything to be. Um, but like I said, I was having a, a bit of uh, trouble trying to decide what I wanted to dig out here and how I wanted to make everything look and I've always found that the best thing to do when you're in sort of a, um, a a block is or like you're having trouble doing something creating something uh, is to go work on something else and so that's what I did and I got some cool stuff to show you down here uh, down in this uh, strip mine or branch mine uh, that we got going on now um, so let's just go ahead and drop down there Woohoo! <laughs> that is way down there. It's a big drop. Um, so this is my branch mine down here. Um, and the way I generally do things is I, I make a three wide corridor in two directions. And then every fourth space, I dig a four high, um, a four high what's it, row going downwards. And then that's how I, how I mine. And I go always go down to level, uh, where's my F3? Uh, level 11. Um, it's right one block above the lava level. Um, seems to be where most of the diamonds are concentrated, uh, so that's what I do. I've got a few materials here. Um, I've just been silk touching stuff. You know, I got some redstone, diamond ore. Um, let's see, I got Fortune three now, so I think on average with Fortune three you get two and a half diamonds per per um, per diamond block. So this should be what uh, sixty something like that, uh, roughly. Uh, but over here is the cool thing. So um, this is where our mine shaft comes down right here. And it turns out that if you remember that zombie dungeon that we found in the first episode, 
it's not actually that far away from where we dug down. Um, yeah, so I decided to make a little XP farm here, a little XP grinder. Um, I decided to do this off camera because, I mean, there's nothing really new going on here. Uh, th these things are pretty generic at this point. And I didn't want to spend a whole episode around building this, so I just did it off camera. Uh, but I'll go ahead and talk about how it works. So, uh, we got the spawner over here, and I've put a 8x8 eight eight room around the spawner. Um, four block space between the, the spawner and the wall on the north and west sides. A three block space on the south and east sides. Um, that is because, of course, where the, the mobs spawn at an intersection point between four blocks. Um, however, the spawner generates on the southeast corner, um, and so that's why you make the north and west sides longer. I'm sure everyone knows that by now. Um, here's my little hidey hole. So when I'm, uh, I'm letting them go, I close these fence gates. I don't use doors or anything because the zombies can break them down if they happen to spawn in the area. Uh, but we just have a eight long water stream, taking them into another water stream. And then they go into a little mob evader over here. Oops, that's supposed to be open. Um, and they fall down into this grinder. And in this uh, mob evader, I actually have a one and a half uh, block high space here with lava. And that is for baby zombies and chicken jockeys. Uh, when I first built this, uh, I didn't take them into consideration. And uh, when the baby zombies and the, the chicken jockeys would get here... Uh, is that guy drowning? Huh, that doesn't happen usually. Oh, you know what? That's probably client... I don't know. Um, <coughs> but uh, they were clogging up my mob evader. And so that little one and a half block space was an easy way to get them out of the way. Uh, let's see if I can get one to spawn here. Um, and then I'll go ahead and show you an action. Oh, there we go. Finally. <laughs> that actually took a little while. Like five or ten minutes. So if we come over here to the mob evader. Um, let's see, where's he at? Oh, there he goes. Yeah, so uh, it's a good way of separating the babies out uh, from the adult ones because the babies don't go up mob evaders very well. Um, just a block and a half space with a lava lava source block there. Uh, babies get get uh, burnt up. All right, so how many do we have here now? Uh, about 40, it looks like. Um, and so in order to, to do the XP grinding, all we do is we hit this button. That dispenses the lava and closes the trap door. And uh, this is based off a design by Squirt Dude. Um, you know, I'll talk about this in a second. It's too loud right now. And if you're wondering why uh, why I have the fence behind me, um, I actually died once or twice doing this. I guess it turns out that now in uh, okay, that's loud. Um, I guess it turns out that now in uh, in the latest versions of or since like 1.6 something. Um, whenever you hit a zombie, um, all the other zombies in the area will come and attack you. And so at first, I, was, I thought I was getting attacked by the zombies glitching through the glass and hitting me. And it took me a, a, a few times to realize that uh, there were zombies coming from the surrounding area and hitting me. So I put this little fence here. Oh, see, look, there comes one right there. And <laughs> these guys were coming up behind me and attacking me. And I thought uh, they were glitching through this glass thing. I was like, what the heck? Um, but I finally figured it out. Um, so that's why that little uh, little fence is there. All right, now like I was saying before it got really loud, uh, this is based on a design that I saw by Squirt Dude. Uh, he figured out that um, as long as a mob dies within five seconds of you hitting it, uh, you get credited with the kill. And when you hit the zombies, they just pop up, jump up into the into the lava, and then burn to death, and you get the XP and the drops. Um, and I've done it a little bit differently here. So the way this works is that uh, when, you, you, when you have a dispenser and a bucket, um, a bucket is a stackable item. So in a dispenser, it only produces a single strength of one, which is not far enough to reach this repeater up here. Um, however, when you pull the lava back into the bucket, um, a bucket of lava is an unstackable item. So this now produces a single strength of two in a dispenser. Um, and that's enough to power this repeater, um, which powers that trap door. And that's how we always keep the lava and the trap door in sync. Uh, pretty fun little design. Um, but check out all this gear I'm getting down here. Um, so I generally don't wear, like I don't make diamond armor in the world or anything unless I'm fighting a wither or something like that. Um, I don't find even hard mode to be that difficult. 
Uh, and I'm I'm probably for the most part just gonna get my armor from from this place. Uh, like if we check this out, protection three, unbreaking three. That's I'll wear that. That's that's great. Uh, protection two, uh, blast protection three, uh, more protection three. Um, oh, looting sword. I'll take that. I've been having a hard time getting ender pearls, and that should come in handy. Um, yeah. So uh, I I think the majority of the armor I'm actually gonna wear is gonna come from this place. That's where I got this stuff from. Um, and you know what? We should probably name it, huh? Like, <laughs> maybe we should name it the uh, the armor shop or something like that. Oh, you know what? I got a sign over here. Um, and I'll probably get all my stuff from there except for diamond boots because I'll probably wear diamond feather falling boots. And it's probably the only diamond armor I'll make until we fight the wither or something like that. Um, let's see. What should we call it? The armor shop? No, because we get more than armor from here. Like, we're getting swords and stuff. And you know what? I'm actually going to use that to repair the sword I have right now. So we get more than armor from it. We also get food. Oops, didn't mean... Oh, sorry about that, guys. Um, I was trying to hit the backspace key, and I accidentally hit F12, which actually stops recording for me. So, <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. Uh, but like I was saying is we get a lot more from this than just armor. So I think what we should call it is the gear shop and uh, I, I think we're gonna try and make this like our main uh, supply depot for, for the time being I mean why make armor when you can farm armor right and you gotta take into consideration also that uh, the longer that we stay here uh, the higher tier armor that the mobs are going to spawn with we'll start getting mobs that spawn with uh, iron armor and possibly even diamond armor so yeah and uh, this just ended up being a really fun project for me because uh, I wasn't, initially I wasn't super excited um, because it's just a zombie dungeon and uh, I was kind of hoping to find a skeleton dungeon. They're just generally more useful. Um, but yeah, I don't know. It's, uh, it's cool to get all this really good armor and stuff, something I didn't take into consideration. And also you got to take, or you got to consider the fact that uh, we're really close to our, our mine shaft. So that's just, it's good placement. And uh, yeah, it was a fun project. And uh, really happy with the way it turned out. And hopefully we can use the gear shop for, for a long time. Um, but I think that's all we're going to do down here. Uh, we got some stuff that we need to do up on the surface. So I think for the time being we're going to leave the, uh, the, the strip mine behind. And uh, I'll see you up there. Alright, now before we do anything else, let's go ahead and do a little bit of gearing up. So I got some diamonds here and my Fortune 3 pickaxe. Ooh, whoa, 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 <laughs> that's pretty good, that's that's better than, than average, I think. Um, yeah, so I mentioned I enchanted a few books as I was getting to Fortune 3. One of them we got has Feather Falling on it, so I want to make some Feather Falling Diamond Boots. Um, should make the boots first, that would be important. And we'll put those here, this here. Um, only cost four of them, that's amazing. And we should probably name them, because hopefully these last for a long time. So, uh, um, what should we name them? Um, uh, rug Cutters, yeah. Our, uh, our fancy blue suede shoes. The Rug Cutters. I like it. We can put these on and say fooey to these enchanted leather boots. Um, what else should we do? I think we should probably... Um, yeah, let's uh, repair this as well. Make this my main sword for the time being. Alright, so um, one of the things I want to do is I want to find some spruce. Um, by the way, I got rid of our uh, our tree farm over here. Um, because this, uh, I noticed this awesome giant tree grow, or uh, grew, <laughs> I can't speak. Um, even when you try to grow giant oak trees, they never look this good. They're like, they, they just end up looking like some like giant uh, ball of cotton candy or something. But this one's got like individual limbs. It's got little groupings of leaves. Really cool looking. So I was like, you know what? We got to keep that. I can't, I can't cut that down. Um, but I think we'll probably end up making a, a proper tree farm over, over yonder. <laughs> um, one of our earlier projects. But for the time being, all I have is birch, oak, and dark oak. Um, I need some spruce. Spruce is like my favorite... Um, my favorite wood to build with, spruce planks. Um, and I figured that we got some extreme biomes. Extreme, man, I can't speak right now. <laughs> biomes. I, we got some extreme biome hills over there. Um, and it's probably got like a stream, extreme biome plus. 
with some taiga. Um, I went that direction already, trying to look for some spruce, but I couldn't find anything, so I figured we'd uh, venture over there and try and get to the back side of the mountain, try and see if we can find any spruce, after we sleep, that is, um, and do a little exploring while we're at it, because I haven't been back that way yet, so we can do a little bit of, uh, of looking around. Um, but I'm going to wait until morning. Um, yeah, so I'll see you in a bit. Good morning. <laughs> and I think this is uh, appropriate timing. Anytime you get some new shoes, uh, the first thing you need to do is take them out walking. Go on a little journey and uh, break them in. Uh, oh, and there's our old stinky leather ones. New and shiny. Old and stinky, new and shiny. <laughs> uh, yeah, so. And my keyboard has got F5 in like the weirdest place. <laughs> Uh, it's got them like it's got the F keys grouped up in in sections of three. Not used to it. Uh, but anyways, let's go adventure. Take our new boots for a little walk. Uh, this place I haven't lit up yet because I've been sort of using it as a impromptu Enderman farm. I've been trying to uh, stock up on Ender pearls, and man, these guys are so derpy. Like I'm in the 14W11B snapshot still, and. <laughs> They're, they're so derpy, it's not even funny. Uh, look at him. Uh, poor Enderman. Poor, poor little Enderman. <clears throat> it's made it really difficult to get Ender Pearls, because they, they don't aggro, and they don't chase you. Oh, there he comes, finally. And they'll kill themselves, like in lava. Oh, yeah. Where'd that come from? He's wearing camouflage. Oh! Oh, you shot my horse, you son of a bitch. Don't you dare shoot my horse. Alright. Let's go. So, that Extreme Hills is over here, right there. And I'm pretty sure... Well, let's see if we can see anything. Oh, there's a... Yeah, there's a giant oak tree. If there's a giant oak tree, there's going to be spruce trees around it as well. So, we need to get up there somehow. Um, <clears throat> and we need to do it without ender pearls. Like, traveling on Amplified without ender pearls is just ridiculously difficult. Like, it takes so long, you're just jumping up and up and up, and then digging out places to jump up. <clears throat> takes forever. Oh, whoa, check that out. Oh, whoa, check that out. We have a floating island there. I did not know that. Oh, that's cool. Ima look, okay, now imagine this. A bridge going from that to that floating island over there. That would look amazing. And that waterfall looks amazing. Oh, man, I love Amplified Terrain Generation. So much potential. Um, we need, can we get up over here? Is there an easy way up? Um, no, there's like a, oh, but there's a little cave over here. Little cave with some water. Oh, it's a big cave. Oh, whoa, that is cool. Oh, wow. How far away is that from our base? Uh, I can't tell from here. That's a cool area. Look at that little, uh, the waterfall. It's got like a skylight. It's like a hidden a hidden pool of tears or something. Pretty cool. All right, so it looks like we're going to have to go around this way um, and jump, jump, and jump. I do have an ender pearl. I could. I don't want to use it, though. Like I said, I've had a really difficult time getting ender pearls. And I want to go to the stronghold pretty early. And I've spent like <laughs> two or three hours trying to farm Endermen. I've got six Ender Pearls. Yeah, it's bad. 14W11B Endermen are derpy, derpy, derpy. See if we can make that. <sighs> I fell. Let's eat something. Oh, yeah, there's spruce right there. Awesome. Oh, look at that. Oh, that's a good view. I'm sort of imagining right now, as I'm looking at this, buildings there, buildings on top of that, and buildings over there, and bridges in between, and that would look uh, pretty awesome, pretty darn awesome. Oh man, check out that sunset. <laughs> you get a really good view of the area around here. Um, I think our base camp is right, it's I think just right in between there, on the other side of this uh, this big hill here. Um, really cool area up top here where the where the roof forest is. Um, probably going to build something there in the future. Going to try to. Like I said earlier, that it would be really cool to build something on all three of these things and then link them together. 
I think that would ooh, 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 if I would have got knocked off right there, <laughs> that would have been bad. Oh, man. A bunch of giant trees up here. I like that. A nice flat area up here as well, and it kind of links together with that area down there. It would be really easy to make like a road that came up here and just build some cool stuff off that. Um, I got six uh, spruce saplings. Um, that's fine. I mean, we just need enough to start a little farm. Um, we don't need to get a, a whole stack. Come here, skeleton. What is the overkill? I don't remember what overkill achievement is. How many mobs do you have to kill to get overkill? I don't know, but really cool flat area up here. Um, yeah, so hopefully in the future we can do some building stuff up here. Um, but we got spruce, so mission accomplished. And I'll see you back down there. All right, so that was fun. <laughs> we got our uh, we got our spruce, and we also found some really cool areas and got some good building ideas for the future. Um, just some, a really cool area up there with like the flat space on top of the extreme hills, and then these the tops of these roof forests. Um, a lot of potential there, so that was cool. Um, and if you're to give you a little perspective, uh, when I was on top of those extreme hills and I was looking down, we were looking at this lava right here. So. Um, I think, yeah, you can just barely see that little lookout point that we were at. Um, so not that far away. Uh, yeah, we're definitely going to be doing something up there in the future. Uh, but for the time being, I want to do a little building. Uh, so you'll recall that I mentioned um, I was having a little bit of a uh, builder's block. I was having a little trouble deciding on what I wanted to do with the layout of the base and everything. And I think I've got a good idea to uh, to resolve that. So I was looking around here. And I got a little bit inspired by this uh, sort of hole in the ground we have here. I, ki I can kind of imagine this being like a pond or like some circular plaza or something. And so I decided what I want to do is I want to move this over a little bit. And I've actually marked it out right here um, to center it with this big rock face. And uh, because I can kind of imagine in the future having like a big grand entrance right here with like pillars and stuff. I think that would look awesome. Um, and making it circular. So we'll dig down to about this same level right here. And we'll start out with a little circle, and then we'll just keep on going up with bigger circles and bigger circles until we have like a nice circular like plaza area. And I'm going to come over here and pillar up because the reason I want to do that, let's see, I'll get a little height here and be a little easier to explain things. So what we're going to do is we're going to move that over and make it nice and circular. We're probably going to have to get rid of the pond, um, but we may actually move it to that to the middle of the circular thing so who knows I'm not sure exactly yet what I want to do with it but uh, the reason I want to build it is because I think I'm going to center my storage room uh, with like that circular plaza like I, I don't know if I'm gonna make like glass or water but I'm kind of imagining being able to see the sky from the storage room underneath I think that would look really cool and I'm gonna use that as like a, a centerpiece to you know to to build around to give me a little bit better uh, direction so you know, just <laughs> to, something to build off of and branch off of. I've been working away already, uh, getting this pond out and uh, getting ready to start digging our little circle area, plaza thingamajig. And I figured while I was doing this, uh, we might as well talk about the new snapshot. Um, and if you're wondering why it's been so long since I've uploaded uh, a new episode, it's actually mostly because of the new snapshot. Um, you know, I've been using all my free time messing around with slime blocks. I made a couple uh, minecart elevators, um, messed around with some piston engines, and the new slime blocks are just crazy fun. So that's the the main reason I've been using all my free time, um, you know, doing that stuff. And I've kind of got it in my system. So uh, the next episode should come out a lot faster. Uh, but when it comes to updating the world, uh, we've actually not updated to the new snapshot yet. And that's because um, even while in creative mode, uh, messing around with the slime blocks, I was getting lots of uh, like chunk errors and chunks that just wouldn't load and I already have a hard enough time you know uh, in Amplified as it is and I don't really feel safe enough at the moment to update uh, our, our world here to the newer snapshots I'm gonna wait for a more stable snapshot um, and it's not like we're in any rush anyways because I mean look let's <laughs> let's take a look at our grand total of slime balls uh, we got a whole stack and a half here I mean we don't have a slime farm or anything so um, it, it doesn't really make a difference at this point uh, we got time uh, by the way, Slime Farm has suddenly jumped way up on the priority list. Uh, previously, I was kind of thinking it, of it as like a you know a late later game farm to do something for fun, but now all of a sudden, 
I'm wanting to make one really early. We're still going to be doing other stuff first, though. Like, there's still some higher priorities, like going to the end. I'm probably building a general purpose mob farm. Um, but a slime farm is definitely going to be a little bit higher on the on the priority list. Um, yeah, so that's, eh, that's all, probably, all we, probably all we should talk about at the moment. Um, yeah, I'm just going to wait for uh, a more stable snapshot before we update because it's kind of risky at the moment. It just feels like the, the new snapshots are a little, a little unstable. Um, and we're in no rush anyway, so. All right, I'll get back to work here. All right, so this is what we got going on at the moment. It looks pretty cool. We got this uh, circular plaza looking thing. Um, I started out with a really small circle and then I started expanding. I went from a one block space to a two block space to a two block space to a three block space um, and then to another three block space. So the, the rings kept on getting bigger and bigger. Um, and if you want to know where how I made these circles, um, I figured them out on a place called Plots on a website. Um, I'll put that in the video description. They have lots of really cool shapes and stuff like spheres and circles and you just plug in the diameter of what you want and uh, it, it shows you how to build it. So if you don't already know, I'll put a link to that uh, video description, not video description, a uh, link to that website in the video description um, and I'll show you how to build perfect circles and stuff. Um, but that's what I did here and I put a little two block high wall around the side. Um, I was kind of imagining like a two block tall stone wall kind of encircling it. So you know how like having like a retaining wall around the outside and then in the middle doing something cool with like, I don't know, making it real fancy, like vines on the stone bricks and then using stone a stone slab pathway and probably putting like a little pond in the middle. Um, but now I'm feeling a little bit hesitant because I'm kind of uh, torn in between two ideas. Uh, one doing that really fancy stone slab and stone brick plaza or making it look all really natural, like having a pond and I'm thinking about maybe having having a tree come up the middle. I think that would look really cool. And then just keeping everything green and grassy and using uh, wooden slab stairs. Um, but yeah, so I'm, I'm not quite sure exactly how this is going to end up at the moment. Um, I'm still messing around with it. Uh, but I think you should get the general idea of what we got going on here. Um, at the very least, it's going to give me something to center um, everything underground with. You know, start building around that. Um, I yeah, I still don't know what I'm going to do. I might, who knows, maybe I'll make it glass. Um, I think be, being able to see the sky from underground would be really cool. I do like the tree idea, like the tree coming out the top. Um, and I may make it bigger, smaller. Yeah, so I, I'll mess around with it uh, between this episode and the next. But that's the general idea. Um, and also, here, let me jump down here. Um, as I was building this, I noticed, or I realized something else I want to do um, with this area right here. So I like it when entrances, entrances to caves have overhangs that come out like this, right? I don't like it when it goes backwards like that. Um, and plus, I need a little more room here anyway. So what I think I'll do is I'm going to take the ground here out to about where this corner is and then like concave it in like that and give it structural supports and make the, uh, that under there like a, an outdoor patio area or something. I think that would look really cool. Um, but I think it would just look a lot better than the way it is right now. Now, do I need to go to sleep? pretty soon. I kind of miss our little pond there. Uh, yeah, it was kind of nice. But like I said, I'm pretty sure we're going to do something water themed inside here. So it will be back. Uh, let me know in the comments uh, which idea you like better. Doing the really fancy stone brick and stone slab thing um, or making it, keeping it all natural, like grassy and just using like wooden half slab stairs with like a big tree in the middle. That would probably look really cool. All right, everyone. So I think that's going to wrap it up for this episode. Um, it was a pretty fun episode. Uh, we finally started to, you know, do some some things unique to this world. You know, we got a got an XP farm going now, a little zombie XP farm. Did some exploring, found some really cool uh, building areas that we may be able to build in the future. So, you know, that's fun to find, uh, you know, inspirational building sites like that. Doing a little building down here. So yeah, um, between this episode and the next, um, I'm gonna do some more Ender Pearl collecting, which I've actually started to get a lot luckier. Uh, once I got this looting one sword, um, and even so, we we still only have ten. Uh, but once you consider, it took me like three or four hours to get six. Um, you know, getting four in like a half hour is not too bad. Uh, but we'll, we'll stock up on inner pearls. I'll do a little more building. Uh, this thing over here, yeah, still not 100% sure on it. I'm in no hurry though. I'm kind of leaning towards that natural look with like the giant tree and 
do stuff like that, but that uh, that stone brick, um, like fancy plaza thing sounds cool too, but it's something we'll just pick away at. Um, but yeah, so I think that's going to wrap it up for this episode. I hope you guys had fun. Um, we we got some stuff to look forward to now. I'm going to start doing some uh, some original stuff, so uh, I'll see you guys again next time.